Good evening and welcome to this edition of the Cleesby Crack live painting show. Now, as you might have seen, there's an interesting caption on this live show tonight, which is painting Paris, which is exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> it's a quite a natural circumstance, really. I've been teaching French all day, so I thought tonight we could paint Paris, reminiscent of the memories of a wonderful time in France, and I thought the best thing to do to commemorate that experience would be to paint Paris. So that's what we've got today. Now, I thought I'd draw your attention to this picture. This is what we're gonna go for tonight. Painting a nice urban scene. That's the aim tonight, a nice urban scene. This being the picture that we might use as, as a means of inspiration for tonight's show. It's a nice city street scene of Paris, the French capital, which we're gonna do in an impressionist style. Now, if you have been watching the other shows, you will know what impressionism means. And of course, by impressionism, we mean this kind of layering of brush strokes to create the impression of a scene. So that's what we're gonna try and go for tonight. Painting Paris, going for the, the impression of an urban landscape in France, in Paris, of course. So, we've got our cameras prepared. Today, we've gone for something slightly different. Instead of just your box standing canvas, we've gone for a canvas board, which is just a little bit thinner, but it's very much the same kind of material, and it all starts with the exact same principle. You get your big brush, a little bit of yellow, and we just start and go away. Now, tonight, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to be very aware of how when we start painting, we create shapes within the work. So, one way of doing that is that you layer this um, canvas board with the paint, you, you, know, you begin to layer the canvas with the paint, but you start to draw into it. Now, as I had shown you before in the picture, what this means is that you start layering up the board with this wet, you know, white spirit, and then afterwards, with a brush, you just draw into the canvas. You draw those lines, you draw out those shapes, you draw out those buildings. If that makes any sense. So you start off with this sort of very loose, um, you know, this very, very sort of loose um, beginning with the white spirit. Get it nice and wet. Keep the brush moving. Same techniques as watercolours. And you just go for it. So, as you can see in the drawing, this, this is the drawing here. These are the sort of lines that we're going to be going for at the start. So we take a thinner brush and we just draw into the canvas, just draw into it, making Paris, making, some ca making a cafe scene. I think when I look at the picture at the top, which I'm working from, we're gonna start off making this nice big building coming down here. And then there's gonna be this kind of cafe. Then there's gonna be all these people walking around. And then the right hand corner here, we're gonna have some other buildings and the trees are just gonna peep through with a bright blue sky. So, <laughs> If you can remember, the buildings, the cafe, the other buildings and the roofs, and the sky. So that's what we're gonna go for at the start. So, get some Prussian blue, and just start drawing into the canvas. Just start by making some bold lines, as if to sort of, yeah, basically it's, you start off by drawing into the canvas, but you draw with the paint. So what we're actually doing at this stage is we're actually drawing in to the canvas board. So that basically means that we, you start the work by drawing itself, which kind of reinforces this very obvious relationship between drawing and painting as being one and the same thing, which is a kind of a key aspect of Impressionism. So you start off with this Prussian blue. Blue is a good colour to start with actually because when you start with the blue, you're kind of creating these, this gesture. Huh? With these gestures, you're mapping out the scene. So you're drawing out, you're mapping out your shapes. You're saying, well, okay, well this is the building and, and this is the sky. And the reason why blue is a good colour to start with is because it's good to create this contrast between the blues and the whites. So you create this contrast and you just draw in.
So say if you're making a sketch with a pen or a paper. The only difference being that this is a sketch with some, you know, with some paint. So you're just sketching in nice and loose, just, you know, here's the balcony, just scratch in to the canvas. Draw it in, and then also you'll see on the, you know there'll be some kind of shadows to suggest as well. So those shadows you suggest with more thick layers, and this is just a base layer. Just start off with a nice base layer, just suggesting the different tones. Yeah, nice and easy. Now this is called painting Paris. Tonight, if you just join, we are painting Paris. I've been teaching French all day, and I thought, what a better thing to do. What, what's better? What could be better than combining a love of French and a love of art and painting the city where I used to live for a short space of time? <laughs> what's good though, with this brush, you can kind of, with the blue, you just create this sketch. So what happens is you you kind of created this sketch, huh? Yep, you get a sketch, and then on top of all these sketched marks in blue, starting out monochrome, of course, you just, I don't know the word, you create this sketch, and then on top of the sketch, then you build up the layers. So you, you start off with your, your, your mapping out the contours, you're mapping out the lines, you're mapping out the details, you're just kind of getting your head in that space and saying, well, I want this to go here, I want this to go here, I want this to go here, and it's a way of just kind of, this is, you know, this whole idea of a blank canvas, this kind of like big idea, oh my god, the blank canvas, the blank sheet of paper, there's this fear. Well, this is one way of just breaking that up. Just get the brush, just sketch it out, no fear, just get it all out, and then once you've sketched it out and you have a sort of a mental image of what you're going to be working on, then you say to yourself, okay, oh, now I feel better about it, and then you just keep going. So this is the first step, just sketch it out, and then slowly, over the course of the hour, all these blue marks are going to guide us in where we apply our colour. Of course, this is such a different process to photography. Because the thing is, when you make a photograph, it's like, you know, you're capturing reality but in this kind of objective way. When you're making a painting, you're capturing reality in a very subjective way. You know what I mean? It's like, these, are, these brush marks are, it's a more of like a sort of a personalised experience with an image or with a place. place. And I like to work from memory, and yeah, it's kind of the idea. So, what we do now is we just kind of hone in on the image, and we say, to okay, well, I, I've drawn this out, and I've drawn this out, and I've drawn this out, and I can sort of get a sense, okay, well, that's that building, okay, and that's that building. Then, we wipe our brush. Make sure that your brush is clean. <laughs> Thanks, Tim, for joining in. Thank you, Hodder, for joining in. Brings me back memories of Irish summer school. I had a nice painting session there. So, one thing to do is we want to create a sky that is reminiscent of this kind of winter, autumnal, blue sky feel. So what we do, you get a big brush, you get lots of white. Now it's still wet from the white spirit. You get a little bit of blue, and you just do this. You just let the brush do the work. Let the brush do the talking, as they say. No holding back, no worries. Just let the brush make that sky. I think it's quite buttery as a texture. The, the, you know, one of the ways of describing oil paint, it's very buttery, huh? It's very buttery. I know that's a kind of a random adjective to use. It's buttery. But it, it's kind of one of the only way, you know, acrylic paint is very watery, you might say. Well, you know, the opposite is a buttery texture. Or oh, the, 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 the the feel I'm going for on this particular painting is this very clear blue sky. Very clear, very fresh blue sky. And by the end of the painting, it will um, sort of make a little bit more sense as to what we're really going for, I think. You know, we're just working loosely on a photograph in black and white. That's the most important thing. The black, the, the photograph that we're working from at the top is in black and white. And this is actually very important because when the photograph is in black and white, in a sense, it gives you more creativity. If, for example, um, I don't know what the word is. If, for example, you were to paint from a coloured photograph, 
Well, then in a sense, your creativity is limited. Because your creativity is limited. Why is it limited? Well, it's limited because you're having to actually copy the colours. What a better thing than to paint from monochrome, being black and white, because then if it's monochrome, well then that quite clearly means that you're having to improvise, you're having to create, think. And that's what I think art's all about. It's about, being, it's about taking those risks. And it's a pleasure tonight to be with those who are watching, to just let this painting unfold and yeah, we'll see how we go. So, so far, we've, what we've done, we've drawn out the, um, I'll bring it a bit closer to the camera. So you can see better. So far, what we've done, this is just 10 minutes, just 10 minutes work so far. We've got the big Prussian, we've got the Prussian blue, got the, we drew out all the different lines. We drew out the buildings, we drew out the, the kind of the space, the road, and it was all on top of white spirit. Then we built up the layers on top. Huh? And then we start off with the sky, very, very, very bright blue, very, very clear blue. And then basically starting off with the blues. Because the good thing about that is that then once you get the blues down, it's easy to apply the, the whites and the other textures and the yellows and the other colors on top. So that's what we've got so far. Um, and we're not really basing it too heavily off of any artists this week. You know, last week it was very heavily based off... Um, Kandinsky and Van Gogh and how he did his trees. Tonight we're just kind of going for a more personalised. We're just going to explore. Now, one thing to remember uh, uh, here, we have to get the shadows and the depth. So, on the picture, we have this light come through. You take the brush, nice and thick, <laughs> the white, just create that white. Today I had um, a very interesting experience in my French lesson at school. So, at school, I'm trying to teach the kids in the French lesson how to describe photographs, right? So, we're trying to learn how to describe photographs, because in their speaking exam, they have to describe a picture. And I said, well, I said to myself, well, what better way than to learn how to describe a picture if you know how to describe a painting? You know, it's a way of me getting the art in there as well. And so, what I did is, I got a famous painting by Eugène Delacroix called uh, Liberty Guiding the People, or La, La Liberté Guidant les Peuples. Huh? And uh, I used that as a, as a way, it's that famous painting, the Coldplay cover, uh, Viva La Vida, the cover uh, picture for it. It's that one with the French flag and they're running and there's all these people with guns and stuff. But, so we're describing that photograph. And after we described that photograph, I, I felt really touched because, you know, I was really, because all these kids who was 14 years old, were really enthusiastic about learning about this painting and about, and I, I just felt so happy. <laughs> and so after that tonight I thought, well, what better way of celebrating an awesome day of French than to paint Paris. So this, this is Paris, and um, it's near Le Pantheon, the, 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 Panthe the Pantheon, which is a big, big, big domed building. It's just a way that it's a street just on the outskirts, uh, near there. So we started off with the blues, we're just suggesting the, the light and the dark. This is the first stage um, with the blues, just, you know, suggesting the light, suggesting the darks, building up those layers until then uh, we can start with the detail. And it's, it's, it's in an impressionistic painting part, which basically means you can see the brush strokes. Huh? You can see the brush strokes. That's so important for art. It's so important for painting that you have the brush strokes visible, visible on the canvas. It's so important because it, it's a portrait of the artist, him or herself. You can see what they're doing. Sometimes I look at these very, very realistic paintings and I have admiration for them, but I can't see that inner journey, that inner... Ah, the inner journey of the artist who's kind of making these brush strokes and, and it's unfolding. And so tonight, really, all I'm trying to go for is in painting Paris to really just kind of in express this impressionistic um, scene. So we've got the blues, we've got the clear blue sky, we've drawn out all the buildings, we've got the different um, tonal values in there. We are basing this, of course, off a black and white photograph, which means that we have to be quite creative with the colours. But I think at this stage, what we can do is we can start working on the colour of the ground. And I think that that should be beige. So in order to get beige, we just get a bit of yellow. So we've got this, and we just mix that in like this. So you see the first tinges of colour. 
taking quite some risks here because, of course, this isn't based off any fixed colour scheme. And that can sometimes be quite hard. Um, but it's best to just let it go, you know, let yourself go. Like that famous Disney song from Frozen, let it go. So basically now, we're getting the yellows, slowly working the yellows in, slowly working the yellows in. Merci, Nabil. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Tu es incroyable aussi. On est tous incroyable. Now, what we do is we're just mixing in those yellows and we're just creating the, uh, this, this depth. Slowly through these interlocking brush That's a good word, interlocking. Through these interlocking brush strokes, it's all going to make sense. Now, do you feel free? Do you, do you feel free? <laughs> do you feel free to um, share the video, uh, comment, any suggestions, feedback? Let me know what you think of the painting. So happy to hear what everyone thinks. Um, part of the pleasure of painting is not just to paint, but also to kind of have people feeling as other involved. Happy of any feedback, any thoughts. Um, yeah, drop us a shout. Anything. Also, just like, how's it going, you know? How's everyone doing? It's always nice on a Wednesday night just to chill after working with loads of kids at school who just paint, you know? Wednesday night, it's the best night of the week. <laughs> now, what we're doing now is with the brush, you know, when you look at balconies and you can see this sort of, um, you can see these, this platform, the balconies, you use the brush and you just express and drag with the paint. And this is following that principle, we draw out the lines, we start out with the white spirit, we map, out the buildings, and then we build up the texture. We build up the texture. That's basically the idea, huh? Building up the texture. So, this of course is, there's this very bright blue sky, and then it builds up. And the picture we're working from, the picture that we're working from, you know, it's, it really is black and white. So this is the picture that we're working from. And you can see this is the challenge we have, because we're basing it off a picture, but the picture well, there's no colour. So we have to improvise and then create. And this makes it this, it's a real journey that we're all on tonight to really find out, well, what colours are we going to use? <laughs> That's kind of the, 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 the difficulty in a way. Now, I really feel like this is going to be red. A red cafe. So what we're going to do, new brush, this size. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. We do need the tree. The tree will come in soon. The tree will come in soon. What we're going to do is we're just going to map, the, we're just going to get the red. So we're just going to just get this cafe scene started. we get the red. The tree will appear. That much I promise. The tree is going to appear. And what's quite cool here is that because of course, depending on light and dark, this red is going to turn into purple. So we start off with the red, and then we just, it's drawing. We're drawing into the painting. The painting and drawing are so incredibly, but we're drawing into the painting. The painting is a drawing because we're not just like, da -da 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 -da, and it all works out. We're kind of mapping it out, and we're taking it through, and it's slowly just getting there. But it, it requires a heck of a lot of thinking time whilst you're actually painting it, and that's part of the struggle is that you just don't know what it's going to look like at the end. But isn't that part of the joy? <laughs> it's quite an experiment at the same time. Now, this side is going to be darker, so we're just going to mix those in. And then we're going to get the tree in there. And then also there's people. So there's the tree, there's the people. Um, I think we're going to have a, a croissant cafe over here. So that's where we're going to get our croissant cafe croissants from. That's what I miss most about France, to be honest. Just haven't quite had a good croissant in England yet. Very rarely do you get a good one. Very, very rarely. I'm sure that my friend Payam Imani knows all about that. Now, the tree. Now, for the most part, I think the trees are brown, you know, <laughs> the, the wood. So what we do, we've got some brown here, we mix the brown. We're just going to create, make it a Starbucks cafe. Yes, it could be a Starbucks cafe. 
why not have a Starbucks cafe and a French cafe? Then everybody's happy because there's actually a lot of Starbucks in Paris, more than I ever thought to imagine. Now, the first tree, we're just gonna, and the way that we do the trees, we just drag and twist the brush. Drag and twist the brush. Just gonna have a cup of tea. Mmm, so good, man. I've come to like tea with milk and without milk. I'm kind of flexible these days. Now, start with the tree. So we just get the brush. Just drag down. Just drag it down. Patient with it. Boom. First one. Second one. Now in the background, just suggest the brush. We suggest the trees. That's the big thing about impressions. We just suggest. We don't, there's, uh, there's a famous painter called Camille Pizarro, one of our favorites. He painted loads of scenes like this. And he said something which when I heard of it, I thought, oh, this guy is making sense. He said that when you do drawings or when you do paintings, don't be too attached. Don't be too attached to it being perfect. And I thought, wait, but I thought that's what art's all about. Well, when we're at school, we all believe, well, I thought that's what art was all about. It's all about, you know, the perfect line and making it look like something. And people are always impressed when it looks like the thing. But then I'm like, no, but then he said, no, you have to convey the feeling. You have to convey the, the sentiment, the feeling, the, 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 the emotion of, of that thing. And I was like, oh, that makes much more sense. So what we're trying to go for tonight. <laughs> Elevated conversation. I think, yeah, I think you're probably right there, Victoria. Thank you for the nice comments there, Victoria. Victoria, <laughs> You're quite right. You're quite right indeed. I've come to realise this week just how much I love teaching, actually, at school. I've got a year 10 class, I've got a year 7 class, a year 9 class at school, and it's just, it's just, it's just a weird, it's, it's such a strange feeling that you know you leave school and you're like, oh my God, there's a world outside of, of school. <laughs> Which is one of the reasons why I do the painting show is to keep myself sane, you might say. Now, just building up the layers and the colors. Can I make something paint-based? What do you mean by that, Kali? Can I make something paint-based? This is a painting, is it not? Oh, do you mean paint base is in abstract? Do you mean paint base is in abstract? <laughs> I can make a massive shout out to you, Kalim. Best MC in town. Best beatboxer in town. Actually, I haven't. I haven't done a lot of beatboxing recently. I used to be much more into it. Now, after having mapped out all the different colors, we're really just going with the flow. We're really just going with the flow. We're just, we're just seeing how it's gonna unfold. We're just letting these colors do, the, do its magic, keeping it nice and clean, no stress, nice and chill, nothing to worry about at all. In control, just trying to be in control. Half of, half, <laughs> Half painting, in fact, is telling yourself again and again, it's gonna be all right, it's gonna be all right, it's gonna be all right. And then I think the more you believe that it's gonna be all right, I suppose it will be all right. Because I go into each painting sometimes thinking, how on earth am I gonna do this? Or how on earth is this gonna turn out? And then sometimes it just works. And I have to confess, sometimes it doesn't, but maybe that's part of the process, you know? You just learn through you know, experimenting and making mistakes, but it's definitely, some of it is definitely keeping it a loose approach to the canvas. Loose brush strokes, keeping it nice and free, no stress, just, this is one way of doing it. You layer these individual lines to create the impression of the tree. So instead of, and which is what we were looking at last week, for those who are watching, if you remember, it's this idea of just layering the colors. And what's quite good is that we painted this very, very bright blue behind the trees, which will always mean that no matter what we paint on top, there'll always be that bright blue sky behind. Yeah?
I was um I've been reading I was reading a book recently, um by a guy called Otto Donald Rogers who I hadn't heard of, um before a kind friend introduced the book to me, and he spoke about how painting is a spiritual exp uh, thing, and um, you know I I thought about it and I I said to myself painting is a spiritual thing. I thought okay painting is a spiritual thing. I thought well, how. How is it a spiritual thing? How is painting a spiritual thing? And then I realized that when you make art, you have to be totally conscious and in the moment and thinking and reflecting and, and, and aware of what you're doing. And then I thought to myself, ah, oh, is that meditation then? Or is it some sort of meditative thing? Is it some sort of self-reflective thing? You know, is that what makes it spiritual? And then I was like, maybe, but then, I, but then also I was like, oh my God, it's spiritual because you're continuously trying to create perfection, or at least that's your aim. You want to make something which you feel is, you know, perfection. Not perfection, but like, you're trying to resolve something, you're trying to say something, there's something you're trying to express, get out, memory or experience. And I realized that that is one of the defining aspects of like human life, you know, we're trying to define our place in the world and the way that we reflect is you know you have the spirit that defines how you think and yeah man like painting spiritual it's such a spiritual um it's such a spiritual thing because you're always having to reflect and think and and pause and and say mm, okay that doesn't work let's try that again mm, no that doesn't work and i feel like painting is kind of a metaphor for life in a way because you, you're having to always think about these different things and the implications of your paintings on others, why they like them, why others don't like them. It's, so, it's really cool. Now, what we've done here on the left-hand side, as you can see, oh, well, it's the left for me, but it's the right for you. That's the thing. It's actually, the, it's the other way around. One of the nightmares of this phone. <laughs> it's all the other way around. But this building here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to mark out, um, so in Paris you've got these amazing architectural buildings, these amazing, um, a guy called Usman um, designed them. Amazing French architect, designed these beautiful, beautiful buildings in the 18th century, uh, 19th century, early, all of Paris had this, this beautiful, beautiful architecture. And that's what I'm trying to go for today with this building, is trying to create that sort of um, aesthetic. <laughs> In this sort of Parisian aesthetic, if that is and is a thing, does that even make sense? The Parisian aesthetic. Donald, thanks for joining, Donald. We are most certainly burning the midnight oil tonight. We are most certainly burning the midnight oil tonight. Now, here we go with the Prussian blue. We're trying to in. It's not quite there yet. We're just building up the texture. What we're trying to do at this stage is just trying to resolve. This complex relationship between dark tones and light tones, blues, Prussian blues, yellows, Naples, oh, so many different colours and we're just trying to work out exactly how do these colours match each other as a painting. Because sometimes I feel that's the issue, is that you can focus so much on the picture that you're working from and say, well I want this to look like this, that you, you forget actually that the painting has its own independent life and it, which has to be respected. Um, no, okay, not respect, that's a bit of a strong word, but it has to have its own merit as a painting so that it doesn't revolve or res um, too much around uh, the image that you might be working from. So at the moment, I'm just trying to work out how all these different colours, in fact, work together. And one way of just to kind of create that depth is to just draw the Prussian blue in like this. Just draw it in to create those balconies. And then just really dab the painting. Dab it. Like little individual brush marks like this. Just dab to create that impression of these kind of thin lines which act as the balcony. Very thin. No stress. Very, 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 very thin. Very, 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 very thin. And on top, 
you kind of you kind of do this. What you do, you take the brush and you just go down, 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 and you can create the windows. Prussian blue, Tim, is um, uh, well, we've got a tube of it. <laughs> Basically, there's lots of different kinds of blue, uh, especially in oil paint and in acrylic paint. I also believe the same for watercolor. It's just a pigment. So you have you have uh, ultramarine blue. You have Prussian blue. You have um, Cerulean blue, um, cobalt blue, uh, that's the only ones I can think of on the head. Basically, these are just different shades of blue. So Prussian blue is a very dark blue, and it's sort of an alternative in some ways to using black. Black can kill a painting. Black, like, oh my God, it can like murder a painting. That's what my art teacher always said. In fact, once I was caught using black, and he, I thought he was gonna kill me on the spot. So if you look at my palette here, at the top, you can see this is very dark here. Right? This is a, a very dark colour, but it's the Prussian blue. And it's an alternative for black, but you can mix it and it goes white. So it's a very nice way of interleaving between the dark and the white. I'll beatbox for Nabil. Okay. If Callie's watching, you'll be critiquing my beatboxing, but I'll just give it a go. That's enough for now. That's enough for now. <laughs> Gotta keep my voice. I have to teach tomorrow. <laughs> now we're gonna draw out the remainder of this building. One way of suggesting space is to use shadow. One way of creating and suggesting space is not to draw the lines, but to paint the shadows. Because that the reason why that is a good thing to do is because you can get so bogged down with making sure that the lines look accurate that you don't understand the implications of each line in space. So you, you kind of just have to create this depth of line and create this illusion of space in a way which doesn't look too contrived. It doesn't, it's, it's a really difficult balance, but it, it's something which through experience you just, I, I have confidence that I'm gonna get better at it. I mean, of course I'm, I'm learning, right? I'm not, I'm not the best at painting ever. I just you know, have this joy for doing it and enjoy it, but um, yeah. Now, there is one thing we have to be conscious of whilst painting this, and that's the fact that there, there will need to be people in there, there, there will need to be um, there will need to be people, there will need to be um, cafe, you know? There's a lot of things you have to focus on in this painting to make it work. I sense another Cleesby is online. Most, there's always a Cleesby online somewhere. Always a Cleesby online somewhere. Becky Cleesby, get yourself on. <laughs> now, we've got most of it just down, but it's not finished. This is only the first step. We now have to just kind of build it up some more. So the next step really, I would say, is we've ha we, we have to resolve this here. And we have to resolve this over here. So we have to create that depth. So what we can do is we can start with the Prussian blue and in between the trees we just draw the, um, the building. So that's one there. And then the second one, it actually juts out and it comes down and then it goes up. So boom, there you go. And then what's really sweet about drawing the trees first is that it's always going to be the suggestion of a line and you just rub and drag the paint. And that's what's so good about oil paint, is that it never really dries, well, it doesn't really dry all that easy at all. <laughs> so you can, you can really play with it and it's really sweet. I'm just creating the illusion of these shadows on the floor. Now, we've drawn out the, um, we've drawn out this building here what we need to do is we just do the rooftop 
and then consecutively we just draw these lines. And then by drawing these lines, we just create the illusion of this balcony. So it's all about illusion in space, suggesting things. Um, yeah. Not every brush stroke being a defining one in a sort of um, a realistic sense because it's not a photograph that we're making, it's a painting. So it has to work as a painting. And that's sometimes the hardest thing to do is you can get so bogged down with making it look like a painting. Yeah, a photograph, sorry. Yeah, okay, so I'll just do some more shadows around the tree. Now, now we're just going to work on the shadows. And then we're going to work on the light tones and the reds. It's really just taking our time, letting it build up. This might not even get finished tonight, you know? This might just be an introduction to the painting. It depends how long it takes. You know, we should never say to ourselves, this has to be finished in an hour. <laughs> it's sharing. Sharing the technique, sharing the technique, sharing the ideas. Now, we need to just draw this tree and this tree. This tree and this tree. Now this is of course a painting of Paris and with regards to whereabouts this is in Paris, this is um Near, it's basically near a place called Boulevard Saint Michel, and Boulevard Saint Michel is an amazing. Well, the whole area uh, is really sweet. You've got obviously the, the, the Fontaine Saint Michel, you've got Le Pantheon, you've got the Les Sorbonne, all these different awesome parts of the city just nearby. And uh, tonight, I mean, I wanted to just paint this memory of Paris in a way, kind of allowing the painting to kind of be a way of processing memory and. How I really enjoyed living in yeah living in France and all this sort of thing and it's just it's trying to consolidate these memories and trying to think about that. So here we've got these dark tones. We're going to try and paint the dark tones in here before we work on the light tones. So it's just a way of building up that texture before we can work on things like the the chairs and things like that. So you can you see how it's basically the, 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 the painting process is very, 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 very simple. Um, I did do all this tonight and yeah, started it about 45 minutes ago. I think. I lose track of time because <laughs> my phone's there so I lose track of time. Um, but basically, yeah, I did all this tonight and just kind of working out all these different dark and light tones. Um, yeah, started this about 40, about 40 minutes ago, yeah. And we have to get the make it make sure that the balcony makes sense. And this here. Thank you everybody for joining in. Man, like just thank you. <laughs> There's not really much more I can say. It's uh it's an absolute pleasure to to see how people just enjoy watching it happen. I, I feel I feel I feel as though people like art. <laughs> it's worth sharing it. I feel, I don't know, like just in general, like music, painting, films, I, I think these are things which people, which connects people. I think art connects people. I think art brings people to it. And I feel as though in a world where there's not much connection, well, there is because of the internet, but like, if you know what I mean, um, art's a very good way of doing that. And um, yeah. I think that everybody can benefit from art. I, don't, I, th I, think it's a th I think it's a myth when people say, oh, I can't draw, or oh, I can't do art, or I can't sing. I mean, everybody can. And I think there's a difference between, I don't know, um, I think it's just, conf I don't know. Does anybody feel that? Does anybody feel, does anybody f agree or disagree? I, d I don't know, I, d I don't know. What, 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 what's right in this, at this stage. I feel like everybody can learn how to be artistic and to express themselves. I think it's just a question of 
you know, uh, applying it. Okay, so basically we've, 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 we've drawn out the colour. That's what we've done at this stage. We've drawn out the colour, and then after having drawn out this colour, we're going to try and just build up the texture. Build up the texture. And also add more reds. It's predominantly a very blue painting at the moment, but that's only because it started out blue. Exactly, Tim. Exactly. Everyone can learn. Just need to practice. It's like the guitar. Or... The flute, anything, anything. You just have to apply it if you're interested in it. It's like learning a language. It's like learning how to belly dance. I don't know, not that I'm interested in I mean, you know, I just never gave it a try. Maybe belly dancing could be quite interesting, I don't know. But, um, you know what I mean. <laughs> now, almost done with just marking out the texture. Right, now we're going to just build up some different layers and some different colours. I ain't belly dancing now. Well, actually, next time I see you, we belly dance. Maybe. Maybe next, next week's show. So what I do is I practice for a week and we can go at the, the Cleesby Crack belly dancing show. But then we need some guests. So I invite you to join in the show next week. Anyone who suggests, come to the north of England, come join in, come belly dance. It could be, could be a good idea. Now, we're just going to work on the light tones. So we're going to build up the white here. So we've got a few different key areas to build on. So here's one. Mm -hmm. Here's two. Three. And also in the middle of the road, just build up the colour. Build up in the light. It's all about contrasts. Painting and art, it's all about... I don't know, the, yes, contrast, harmony between dark and light. And the more that you can achieve that in a painting, think the better. So we're going to just draw a, a sharp line down, that sharp line down, and that sharp line is just going to give us the impression of the, see, just gives us that impression of the different lines of the balcony. So get those sharp lines across, and we're going to introduce the same techniques to all of the other parts of the painting. So we just dab. Yes, dab. I know. Guys, if anyone's watching, what's the Man United v West Ham score? Can you remind me? Anyone who's watching, what is what is the Manchester United again West Ham score? Um, if anyone's watching. This and that. I would be very kind. That would but that would be very kind. Thank you for joining us, Ronnie. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. You've missed a whole... No, joking. <laughs> so many simple concepts to introduce at this stage. For those who've just joined. Starting off a painting, you draw and you map out the scene. You draw and you map out the scene. Then, you build up the texture. You build up the texture slowly. And then you create this harmony between the dark tones and the light tones. And that is sort of, in some ways, if there was ever to be a theory of painting, I suppose that's one of them, really. You need to build, you just build up the texture, build up the tones. Build up the texture, build up the tones. Now, I think here we add some red. Just add some red, just to spice up the tree. Some red. Some red there. And also some red here. Now, now that the trees, we just need to finish off this part of the building here. Huh? To build up this painting here. Now, that can start 
there. So, oh, whoops, we made a mistake. So, the, I made a big mistake. Well, not the biggest mistake ever, but, I mean, basically, massive mistake. <laughs> Um, with the with the perspective, perspective is so important, man, and that comes from drawing. So you learn about perspective through you learn through experience, like li like literally, that's like the theory of life. You learn through experience. Like there's not much more I can say about that. It's just textbook, man. Learn through experience. So the, the, if you if anybody just wants to like get better at drawing, and this is I'm kind of teaching myself at the stage. You just have to draw, like draw, 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 draw a teacup, draw a TV, draw your mum and dad, draw your grandma and granddad, draw your dog, draw a tree, draw on the train, draw every, all the time, just draw, 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 and that's the basic principle of, um, it's like if you play a musical instrument, drawing is like practicing your scales on the piano or on a guitar or something, so the more you practice the scales, the better you get. Um. Okay, so with the brush, we're just suggesting that these balconies and this window. I'm doing that underneath here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Good. Good, 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 good. Now. What we need to do now, after having built up all of this texture, clean our brush. <laughs> Gotta clean our brushes, man. Gotta clean our brushes. Then, and only then, and only then, do we start to draw the chairs. Because there's people in this picture. If you want to have a look, look, you see? This is the picture that we're working from. You see? Now, so... We've kind of got there, sort of. What we need to do now, now is we need to look again and again, more and more at the photograph and just build up uh, the detail. Yeah, and it starts by just putting down those tiny, tiny little things that we need in the painting in order that it works. And at this stage, I feel as though we ought to have a look. So. What do you guys think? The photo is from the internet. No, it's not. It's my own personal photograph, of, of course. <laughs> now, that's what we've got so far. So you can see how we're just balancing out the colours. We're just... that. This, we're about 75% of the way there at this stage because obviously we haven't got any people. It's kind of a, a ghost town at the moment. I mean, that might be the effect that we're looking for. Paris ghost town. Not really. I think the, the effect that we're looking for at this stage is um, to get all the dark and light tones down. Now we're going to get some more detail. So, I'm just going to get some more paint. Um, yellow. What colour do we need now? After, having, after yellow. I think we need red. Ah, permanent geranium lake. Beautiful red. We're gonna go for French ultramarine blue and look at this white man. That's how big the white is Like massive donk off white. It's like you gotta squeeze Tonight I'm not gonna be painting with my hands uh, Just to you know, let you know last week I was painting with my hands to the shock of everyone. No joking <laughs> Now I'm just gonna build up those details so, first step, just take the palette. We need to just paint the, um, oh, wrong one. No, actually, what colour should we paint? A, what colour should we paint a chair, a table top? I suppose white at this point would be not a bad idea. Just get the white. And just. Ça me fait penser de des artistes impressionnistes comme euh, Camille Pizarro, comme Paul Cézanne, 
Euh, il, y a les, il y a plusieurs artistes en fait que j'aime bien euh, qui utilisent ce, ce, ce style en fait, ce style de la peinture. Et, euh, et euh, c'est. C'est intéressant à voir que la touche n'est pas statique, hein? ça bouge. C'est important à te. De, enfin, de se souvenir en fait que c'est vivant euh, le tableau et des fois c'est c'est ça en fait le dessin la peinture that's basically what it's all about now I would reckon that this side we put the white and then in the middle we put the blue we put the blue here and there are the tables that's sort of the table The suggestion at least of a table. Then we kind of just um we sort of just get the chair. Just having to map out the blues. Now, of course, there is no such thing as a blue chair. Well, I mean, there is such things as a blue chair, but these chairs might not be blue. But it's just that painting is 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 like, for example, you could paint a face with blue, green, and red, orange. But of course, my face isn't green and blue and orange. You know what I mean? You know what I know? So, in a sense, you've got to um, detach yourself from this idea that that. The, it's got to be incredibly realistic because it's the combination of light and dark that works um, Not just the obsession with the idea of color uh, and, 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 and how that color uh, is, is right or wrong I mean man, you can use any color you want. That's not the key. The key is um, Is finding that balance between the colors You know what I mean? Okay Guys, what time is it? If anyone's watching, what's the time? What is the time? Because I don't have a watch and my time is on my phone and I'm using my phone. Anyone watching, I'd be very, very grateful. Just let us know what the time is. Eight twenty-four p.m. Thank you. Now, Prussian blue again for these darker tones. So basically, we 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 I mean we have we have to just kind of So with the white here, for example, you create that illusion of depth going down. That's a very, very uh, important thing to do. So we, we're now what we're going to do is we're going to use the white to create this contradiction between light and dark. Now we're going to use it to help us. Next step, next step, next step, next step. Uh, the white there. The white there. There. And there. You see how it's just sort of making sense. It's kind of almost getting there, isn't it? It's not there yet. I have to confess to you, not there yet. But we're almost there. Guys, I can't believe that this is the fourth Please Be Cracked painting show. What a time it's been. This is the fourth one. I can't believe it. How many are we going to go for? <laughs> so dare I die. Now, what's the one colour we haven't done so far? I think there is a sincere lack of orange. I think there's a sincere lack of orange. I think that's a problem. We need to whack some more orange in there. Where are we going to put the orange in? I just don't know. Maybe we'll just have to just experiment and see. 
where seam is best, I suppose. You can just, you know, touch up here and here. Now, if you're watching, I will tidy up the floor. Just dab the brush to suggest um, these these trees, huh? Just expressing this kind of idea that the trees are just there and it's all working out. Not too 100% attached to the accurate depiction. I think the light is coming from here. This is why the shadows are pink. Can you see the direction of the shadows? The direction of the shadows are explicit of the position of the sun um, in the painting and then and that's an important point to remember or at least to consider and sometimes you can try to create a very 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 um, strong shadows which actually might not be useful if you just apply lots of paint it might be more constructive to make the light lighter if you make the light lighter then the dark will appear more dark. Does that make any sense? So you create, for example, here we want to have some shadow. Well, if you want to make that more appear more dark, make the white whiter. So you heighten the contrasts rather than trying to apply more paint onto your desired um, color. The, but, but these things just start making sense as you just kind of. After the you know, after the hundredth painting, you just kind of pick up techniques and ideas from making mistakes. So it's all about making mistakes. It's all about making mistakes, and then you learn from them, and then you go forward. Bum, 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 bum. I think we need to put a little bit more yellow here, right? So. That's better. You see, sometimes it just clicks and you just say to yourself, yes! <laughs> or at least it appears that way on the canvas. <laughs> I don't know what it looks like on your end, but something just seems to have clicked in my mind. But I mean, I don't know. Maybe when you look at it, you think, oh no, Sam, what did you do? <laughs> but, oh man, I don't know. Don't they? I, I just. You see, now we're tightening up these edges here. Just tightening up the edges. Now, of course, we forgot here, this is, these are chairs. So we have to just make those chairs a bit darker. Table, chairs. Now, one thing we've forgotten. And what are they? Of course, they are the people. Now, last 10 minutes, we need to get people in there. This is always really hard. Like, legit. Like, just, it's always hard to get the people in. It looks like Paris, it's got that prison feel. How do we get the people involved? How on earth? It's tricky, it's hard. Now, one way of doing it is you just go for the outline first. You create the outline, give the impression of the outline, and slowly it will just click. Maybe, somehow, you just don't know. You just... So I would, that's what I would suggest at first. So for example, in the picture, there's a guy with some nice sunglasses walking towards us. I suggest we call him Pierre. Bonjour Pierre, bonjour Pierre, let's say bonjour Pierre, bonjour Pierre. Pierre is coming towards us. Bonjour Pierre, Pierre comes. Now, Pierre, I believe, is wearing quite a suave jacket. Pierre's wearing quite a suave jacket. Now, how on earth do we create the impression of a suave jacket? We get the brush, we create a triangular shape to create this kind of humanoid figure. And we do it just about there. So we just go down, 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 
down, down, down, okay, down, down. See what I mean? That's his first load of colour. And then in the distance, they get progressively more abstract. So then they just become lumps of paint. <laughs> People just become lumps of paint. <laughs> That's kind of what we all are, really. We're all just lumps of paint. And then with the, for the heads, <laughs> you just tap. The painting. It's the lazy man's, the, the lazy man's approach to art. Tap the dots and make the paint. That's why I'm a landscape painter, man. I'm not a portrait painter. I just, oh man, legit that. Like, add a bit of red. Just spice him up a bit. Make Pierre look a bit more pretty. I think we should give Pierre a bit more love. I think that Pierre needs a bit more love. He's got a nice winter coat on. That's Pierre walking towards us. I think he needs a bit of white on him. He needs a bit of white. Just jazz up the face, hand, hands, coat. What do you guys think of Pierre? No, no, there's no reflections on Pierre so far. I think he's lonely, man. Let, tell, let me think, say hello. And we do the same thing to this. Just light, dark lines, creating the impression of the sort of the, um, uh, the different, um, ways that the light reflects on his jacket. Now, I don't think at this stage, even if we finish now, the painting isn't quite finished. This is kind of the first step. So even if we put this on Facebook afterwards, you know, we can just say part one. It's like Harry Potter part one. Deathly Hallows part one. You know what I mean? Or whatever film part one. Was it The Hobbit part one or part three? I can, uh, no, part, yeah, it was part one. There was three parts. Wasn't it? So, it's the same for this painting. This is Cleesby Crack, Paris painting part one. We're going to touch on it more. We might spice it up, add some new things. You know, maybe we'll add a French riot in there. Riot. Add some ratatouille. I don't know. Handsome Pierre. Pierre's the, Pierre's the man. Mm. Pay him on. Welcome. Is this the night, man, where we paint you as a... Uh, Attacking a shark, or as a shark, I can't remember what the deal was. I do remember that there was an agreement or something. Please, Pierre. My friend, it's not crack as in the drug. This, I feel as though I should have explained this. I feel as though I should have explained this at the start of the show. I feel as though I should have explained this at the start of the show. There's a difference between crack, C-R-A-C-K, and C-R-A-I-C. Crack, C-R-A-I-C, is the Irish word for good fun or banter. So when I called it the Sam Cleesby Crack Show, I wasn't referring to a drug called crack or just like a crack in the wall. But it's just like, I am on drugs, it's true. Um, it, it was like, yeah, good banter, as in like the crack. Um, yeah, enough said on that, really, I think, um, I might, yeah, yeah, that's kind of it. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, there's lots of room for discussion, um, on this, uh, t topic, but I think basically the idea is that it's the crack. Okay, I think we're finished there tonight. Um, I'm going to zoom in and let you know how we have got on. So, what did we paint tonight? Well, as you can see... Tonight, we painted Paris. Not bad, eh? Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. We painted Paris. Um, here we've got Pierre. This is Pierre. Here. Pierre. We painted Pierre and all of his friends. And there's a cafe here. And there's all these buildings. And it's kind of blue sky feel. A winter landscape. It, no, no, no winter landscape. Uh, a winter in Paris. Um, that's kind of what we're going for, and yeah, um, thank you very much for all of your attention, thank you for all of your awesome comments, um, thank you for joining in, 
um, do feel free, feel free to share the video. It's been a it's been an absolute pleasure to paint it tonight. We've gone for Paris. We've painted it. We've thought today. Anyone who's just joined in, we'll give you one last look at the painting. Before we go, this is what we went for tonight. So as you can quite clearly see, we've got these trees, we've got this depth, we've got these buildings and colours and yeah, Paris man. That's what we went for. Merci tout le monde, au revoir, bye bye bye. If you haven't seen it so far, you just joined, I'll give you a few minutes to look at it. So here's Pierre. This is Pierre, my friend, Pierre. <laughs> This is Pierre's friend, uh, John, I don't know. Uh, we've got the cafe here. We've got the different, um, different buildings all around. And then that's it, really. Thank you for joining. What's next week? Next week, see what happens. I think so far, what have we done? We've done, we've done a, a sunset on the water. We've done a Paris landscape. We've done a winter forest landscape. We did an African landscape for the Congo. Next week, I say... I say we focus on interior. We paint interiors. So for example, we paint um, you know, an, an interior scene, a still life, something which is indoors. Or we'll just see what happens this week something awesome happens a week. I'll keep you posted. Take care. Rainforest, could be. Swiss landscape, could be. Anything, it could be anything. Let me know what you'd like to see painted. Drop some comments, drop some ideas. Could be anything. In the meantime, enjoy. Take care, feel free to share the video. Thanks a lot. Take care, bye.